Today I set up and I wanted to share thoughts and ideas and strategies about tooling with you. The R8 is a style of tooling made by the Bridgeport Machine Company in Bridgeport, Connecticut, made originally for the Bridgeport knee milling machines. This is, to my knowledge, the most popular small mill collet or tool holder system in the US. So for small machines, this is it. And when you get up into the bigger machines, then you're going to be looking at uh, Cat 40 and Cat 50 and HSK for five axis and that kind of thing. But I really wanted to focus on this because this is what we have chosen to concentrate on in this shop. So choosing a popular style helps, gives you the most options. And that's really what I wanna show today is talk about the R8 tools, tool holders, and the availability of different types, all the different options that are out there. So this is a full set of the standard R8 spring collets, the original style that Bridgeport designed. These are a mix of inch and metric. So you have all the way from 7 eighths down to uh, 1 16th of an inch. We do organize everything in the shop, including the collets by actual size. The inch and metric collets mixed up, but they're in order of actual diameter size from large to smallest. In reality, we don't care what size of the collet is. When we're choosing a tool, we're gonna grab the tool and we're going to go and find the collet that fits it the most appropriately. Do I really care if it's metric or inch? No. It doesn't matter. When we grab a tool, we literally, I know where the three quarter inch is because I use it all the time, but you're just looking for the closest fit to the tool that you're gonna use. In prototyping work, we're doing all kinds of different projects. We're using weird tools. We're using uh, inch standard and metric tooling. We make tooling ourselves. We may have a weird piece of stock in-house that we need to turn into an odd tool for a job. And having every size gives you the most flexibility and the, and the option for choosing the biggest tool you can use for every job. It's best to basically have at least one of everything available. And we've pretty well done that here. Whenever I see a new tool out there that's R8 shank or R8 compatible, we usually just buy one if it has any application to what we're doing. When it comes to R8 tooling and rigidity, nothing beats the original spring collet with the tool pushed up as far as it will go in the collet. If you put that in the spindle this way, that's gonna be the most rigid setup with the R8 spindle on your machine. Everything else is going to be longer and a little bit more flexible and maybe have a little bit more run out. The big disadvantage to this is these are not what is called fixed tooling. You can put the tool in here and tighten it up in the spindle and that's great. You can set your Z height and do your machining but as soon as you take that tool out or the, the collet out of the spindle, you've lost your Z position. So this is kind of useless for CNC programming and machining. Um, you can work around it, but it's not efficient and it's a pain in the butt. Another thing to mention about R8 is that you have a maximum size that you can hold is uh, usually about 7 eighths. They do make a 1 inch collet in R8, but as you can see, this one sticks out another inch and a half, and because it's still a spring collet, there's nothing supporting the tool out here. So if you put a 1 inch collet or 1 inch tool in this collet, your spindle is clamping up to my hand here, and there's nothing else supporting the tool out here. So this can still flex. I wouldn't trust this for anything where you needed uh, a lot of rigidity. To me, this particular tool is kind of a gimmick. It's not super useful, but if you needed to do some light milling in a pinch and all you had was a big one inch cutter, you could probably get away with it. We have one because uh, it's been handy a few times and having one of every size has proven invaluable for doing fast overnight rush work where you need to just make it work however you possibly can. The max useful size for R8 is really three quarter because there aren't a lot of tools that are made in 7 8 shank size or anything in between. I used to work at a hobby shop that sold radio control race cars. When a customer would come in, 
They would often say that they wanted to make their car faster and they often wanted to buy a new motor. My manager would smile, wave his hand over the huge wall of dozens of modified motors. He would say, pick your poison, and he would proceed to help them to decide which one to buy. What he meant was that no matter which one you choose, you're going to break your car faster than if you just left the original motor in it. Does that mean that you should not change the motor? No, just be smart about how you run the car with a hot motor in it. I still remember that and it applies here too with tooling. Every tool you choose has drawbacks. In fact, every collet you choose that's not the original Bridgeport spring collet is going to not work as well and you just have to be aware of what you're doing and use them with the knowledge of what it's not good at as well as what it does well. So for example, in tooling, this is the original spring collet and this is a ER16 collet holder with the R8 shank. It's an integral tool and you get the benefit of being able to put any size ER16 collet you want in here and put things like drills, end mills, whatever cutting tool you need. The main reason for this, it gives you fixed length tooling. If you're gonna do any kind of CNC work, multiple part production, runs or repeated runs of parts, then you need the tool to be fixed in the collet so that it can't slide around when you take the tool out of the machine. It will hold your tool offsets. You can set them up in your machine, but what you get along with this that's not great is the extra length. You can see this tiny ER16 holder has another inch and a half, two inches of length to your tool. So that is extra stick out from the tip of your spindle which makes it less rigid. It gives you the potential for more run out and inaccuracy in the rotating precision of your tool. And we have another one here. This is a integral shank, what they call a solid tool holder, where you have an end mill being held by a set screw in an integral shank R8 holder. These are great for roughing and high load milling, but they're not really as precise. They're not as concentric as the ER collets. And then you have a whole host of other tools we'll show you. For example, this is a 22 millimeter arbor with a integral R8 shank, and this has a gear cutter mounted to it. You can get arbors with a straight shank, but then you have to stuff it into that three quarter inch spring collet that we talked about. And then you're introducing flexibility, concentricity issues. The integral shank is definitely the way to go. So what we have found is by far the best option for fixed length tooling in the R8 style is the ER collets. You can get them all the way from a small ER11 all the way up to a large ER40 holder. Overall, the best option, they're fairly rigid. You can get a whole series of collets in every collet style. It's pretty good concentricity, rigidity, and it's really fast and easy to change. It's pretty much the way to go is the ER style. For things like the ER collets, it used to be that if you really wanted a precise, accurate, nice quality collet, you would buy Lindex or another brand like that. These days, it really doesn't make much sense to buy the Lindex collets because the import ones are just as good. If you have a bunch of extra money that you want to spend on getting collets with the Lindex name, laser engraved on it, that's great. But really, concentricity wise, I have tested the import collets versus the Lindex, and I've actually found in several cases where the import ones were better than the Lindex collet. The only drawback, like I said, is that it makes it very long. If you're gonna have a tool in an ER collet, it's going to stick out three inches longer than it really has to, because it's in an ER collet and not a spring call it, then you have to be aware of the effects th that that's going to have. This is a fairly difficult tool to work with because it's a small diameter and it's very long. So you're going to get chatter unless you're very particular about your speed and feed setting. And you can work around that a little bit by either going higher or lower than the settings that you normally would go. A lot of the times you can go a higher RPM and use that momentum to cut through the material with less chatter than you normally would. Or if it's really long, usually the solution is to go very slow and that will allow you to cut without getting the chatter as well. You also could go with a fixed holder for this same tool and you have to decide which one's gonna be better for your application.
It is very important, especially if you're new to machining and you are considering buying a machine or you're learning about process and tools. You really need to know the different tooling options in order to be able to choose a machine. If you're an experienced machinist, I'm sure you're very familiar with R8 tooling. And what I'm hoping is that I can maybe show you something you haven't seen before that might spark some interest or application for the work that you do. Hopefully you'll see some holders or some tools or notice something that I mentioned that might help you in what you do for your work. This study of tooling and research and this knowledge of what's available is actually re really important. It's a critical information for doing machining and making decisions about it. Getting the pleasure out of uh, what you do often is tied to how annoying certain things are to set up, how difficult it is to get something the way that you want it or the, the way that is right, is really gonna make it more fun and interesting uh, and make you more successful as a machinist.